Yes, you read that right. This is literally just going to be a video of me resawing a 2x4 in real time. And I'll do a little bit of narration. I like to start out by just cutting away the corner there right on the line and establishing a small just point of reference. I do the same thing. I flip the board and do the same thing on the other side and then I just basically connect the two lines and establish a very thin or not very deep curve that maybe is about an eighth inch down. From there, I take a really extreme angle and just concentrate on cutting a curve exactly on that line, maybe six inches down or so, and then using the curve on the top and the curve I just exaggerated on the side there, I cut until I reach from the bottom of the curve on the side to the very back corner on the top. And then I flip it and do the exact same thing. And once you have that, you have a good three to four inches of a really solid curve. And from there, it's almost impossible to go wrong. And every so often, you just dip your hand, or I dip my hand, exaggerate it a little bit, and concentrate on cutting a straight line right down the line. And when you have that curve there, your saw wants to follow it. I know that you're not supposed to really force your saw through by putting extra weight on it with my hand. You see how I've got my hand on it there? I swear I'm not trying to push it down to make it cut faster. I know that really doesn't work. I just find it's what I end up doing. It feels comfortable. I like the extra steadiness. And sometimes I'm just awkward and put my hand on the side and it just doesn't feel right. So like that, just I like putting it there. Now, if you're watching this, you must be a glutton for punishment, and let me just give you a quick disclaimer here. This isn't some video I needed to just put out because I wanted more clicks or whatever. It helps. I'm not going to lie. It was easy to just film this and narrate over it, but I... Oh, there I go. I was obviously getting tired, as I said, but... <laughs> this is hilarious. I'm not going to lie. It's kind of embarrassing. But what was happening is that my saw was binding. So I went ahead, as you can see, and wedged it and just made sure that my saw was waxed. But again, getting back to the issue here. I did so much sawing. And as you can see, the saw just built up behind it. I just thought I would just see if anybody wanted to watch this and if I had anything to offer and if anybody was building this maybe they would want to see exactly what I do when I saw and if you're an expert out there maybe you can help me correct me a little bit I'm pretty happy with my results my lines meet up very well but fairly well but I'm never above correction uh, that's in of course in a good spirit and if I can get better that's what I want so again if this could help somebody or if maybe somebody could help me that's why it's out there and yeah it's another video for anybody who like I said is a glutton for punishment you should have seen me that I've actually flipped the board end for end because you can't saw all the way down when it's clamped in your vise and then the other thing you might have noticed is that I've keep well I do keep flipping it back and forth from front to back and that's because one of the simplest ways that you can keep your saw cutting nice and straight over long distances is just to keep flipping the board. So if you have a tendency to wander to the one side, like I think probably a lot of us do, I know I do, if you flip it, it'll wander the same side, but it'll be opposite of what you just were. So if you wander to the left and then you flip the board, that left is now on the back, which means it's on the right. And then you're gonna be wandering again to the left again. And it just kind of corrects itself that way a lot easier. And another good thing about that is it forces you to stop. And maybe you're getting tired. You can take a breather and just refocus. Here I'm just checking my lines. I am just habitually checking my lines.
again I do the thing where I drop the saw at a really exaggerated angle to establish a kerf because for me it's a lot easier to establish a little thin kerf like that on the one end for my saw to follow when I flip it than just to trust that everything's going right because again I'm not an expert here but this is what I found works for me I know that in my second part video for the shaker knife stand build I mentioned why I put that piece of wood there but you'll see in a second it's because whenever I cut through and I finish the cut I almost always smack the bench top like that. So I'm glad I have it there. And this was actually the very last board I had to resaw down the middle for the shaker knife stand. I'm pretty pleased with the cut. Well I know it's a big ask but I hope this was somewhat enjoyable and maybe a little bit useful and as always thanks. And I'll see you next time.